Good Erev Shabbos, everybody. This week's parsha is out of Kisavri. And here, Maishu Rabbeinu, it states, he and the elders of Klai Yisrael <coughs> speak to the nation. And they tell them, observe the mitzvahs I am about to tell you. And then Maishu Rabbeinu says, also, he tells them, as Hashem ha'marta hayyun, God, you have distinguished today that he will be for you, your God, that you will walk in his path and you will observe his statutes, his mitzvahs, his laws, and that you, Klal Yisrael, will listen to his voice. <coughs> Moshe continues and says, Hashem And God has distinguished you today that you, Klal Yisrael, will be unto God a treasured nation. We are his treasure. As he has spoken to you, the Lishma Kol and we shall observe all of his mitzvahs. Here, Moshe Rabbeinu is telling us of the unique relationship that Klal Yisrael has with God, our Creator, in which we have distinguished him, and we do so that we proclaim him as our God, our unique bond, which is demonstrated by the fact that we walk in his path and we observe his mitzvahs that he has given us. And God has distinguished us. He has demonstrated that we are unique. How are we unique? We are his special treasure and that we observe his mitzvahs. The Urachayim, he asks two questions. What does it mean that we are God's treasure? This is not the first time that we've come upon this. As the verse says, you are my treasure as I've spoken to you. When we stood at Sinai in the book of Exodus and Parshas Yisrael, God said that we will be his amsagula, his treasured nation from amongst all the nations of the world. What does it mean to be a treasure? something special, something beloved, but what exactly does it mean? How do we translate this? In addition, the Rechayim asks and says, Moshe Rabbeinu is telling us of the unique relationship. Klal Yisrael, we have proclaimed that Hashem, the Creator, He is our God, and we will serve Him, and we will show Him our loyalty as we observe his mitzvahs, walk in his path, listen to his voice. This is how we show that God is unique unto us by what we are doing. And how does God show that we are unique unto him? That we are his treasure. That makes sense. But then the verse continues, and that we will observe his mitzvahs. The Rechaim says, wait a minute, well, our observance of God's mitzvahs, is that what God is showing us? Is that what God is doing for us? That's what we're doing for him. That's how we serve him. That's not how God demonstrates that we're his treasure. Imagine somebody, two people entering a partnership. One says, here's what I'll do for you. I'm going to give you 50% of the gross, and I'm also going to give you your name up in lights. And the other one says, I'll give you 50% of the gross, and I'm going to put my name up in lights all by myself. What kind of a deal is that? That doesn't make any sense. How do we understand this? <clears throat> so the Arachayim tells us two very, very fundamental points, which are important for Jewish knowledge and the entire Jewish perspective. And that is, we think of mitzvahs as an obligation. We think of the fact that we have so many mitzvahs. The Gentiles have seven biblical mitzvahs. Jews have 613 mitzvahs. We're not allowed to do this, and so we can't eat that, and we're not supposed to say this, and we have to do that, and we have to do this. Many of us look upon the mitzvahs as a burden, heaven forbid, or certainly a responsibility, a yoke 
that we have to fulfill. We have to get up early in the morning and we have to dive in and we have to watch what we eat and we have to check every product that we buy, make sure we see the heksha, the OU, the OK, the star K. We have to make sure it's kosher. The Torah is telling us something very, very different. The fact that God has bestowed upon us his mitzvahs is his gift to us. It is demonstrating how unique we are, how distinguished we are, and his incredible love that he has for us. Because what is a mitzvah? Yes, a mitzvah is a directive, a commandment from our creator. But a mitzvah functions as a channel. Imagine a channel, like we have channels of which there are waves of images that we could pick up on a television screen. Or there are airwaves in which they're carrying sound that we can pick up on a radio. There are various channels in which there is a flow. There is a flow of God's blessings that become available to us through each and every one of his mitzvahs. There are 613 channels. Imagine that. Each channel is presenting to us an opportunity in which we can receive God's blessings, blessings that shall impact upon us not only spiritually, but to add meaning to our lives, create a bond within our home, and see that we can appreciate every moment of the gift of life that God bestows upon us. That's a mitzvah. A mitzvah is something which is intended to bond us, tie us for all eternity unto our creator. It removes the spiritual stench. It removes that which will pervert our thoughts, corrupt our thinking and our behavior. It keeps us focused. That's a mitzvah. Every mitzvah is a gift. This is what Hashem is saying. I have distinguished you today. You are my treasure. And look what I've given you. The opportunity to observe my mitzvahs, which is how we open these channels to receive the flow. person who has clogged arteries, their life is in jeopardy. The flow of blood is not being distributed. Imagine if they can take this pill and it opens their arteries and here comes the life-saving blood flowing. Each mitzvah is a magic pill in which it's opening the spiritual arteries and allowing the flow of blessing of God to permeate within our entire essence and being. And this is because we are his treasure. What does it mean to be a treasure? Chaim says, <clears throat> what will happen if maybe there will rise a nation that recognizes the one true God creator? And what if they wish to cling unto God and they wish to seize the opportunity to serve him and be one with him? And they become incredibly observant and submit themselves. Perhaps you would think that God would say, what a wonderful nation. Look how they embrace the proper behavior. Perhaps God will bestow upon them his great gift of mitzvahs and Torah. Or, heaven forbid, if Klal Yisrael should stray. And if too many of us should lose our path and our direction, and become lost in our Jewish identity. And yet here there are others from the Gentile world who behave in such a way in which they reflect the existence of God, and there's a godliness. Perhaps one would say that God might state, this nation, this nation is more worthy than Klal Yisrael. I will exchange the Jewish people and I will now take them as my chosen ones. This is the meaning of a treasure. 
after the incident of the golden calf, God accepted our regret and our repentance. And God accepted the heartfelt, boundless prayers of Moshe Rabbeinu who interceded on our behalf. And when Moshe saw that this was a favorable time and God forgave us with love and joy. And once again, he gave us the 10 commandments that Moshe had to break when he saw the golden calf. Moshe saw that this was a great opportunity and he prayed unto God that there should be a covenant established in which he says, God, please demonstrate that you will show that when if we knew Amcha, that we will be different. Klal Yisrael, Niflinu Anini Amcha. I and your nation, Israel, will be totally separate and different from the rest of the nations. Meaning, let Klal Yisrael be your treasure. What does it mean? God, look in the hearts, look in the souls of Israel. And let it be known that you see that their hearts and their souls are pure. And even when we sin, it's a temporary lapse. And even those who have gone astray and lost their identity, it's because of the influence of the exile. It's because of foreign cultures that have permeated our being and assimilated within our thoughts. Recognize, God, that this is not who we are. And that when we are stirred, we will be brought back to you wholeheartedly. And therefore, Moshe prayed and said, God, make this covenant that no matter what, we will never be exchanged. Never will Klal Yisrael, in spite of their shortcomings, in spite of their being stiff-necked, in spite of whatever mistakes they make, they will always be your chosen people. And Hashem accepted Moshe's prayers and established this covenant. And that's the definition of a treasure. Even if we fall, even if we've lost our way, even if there are other nations that demonstrate a greater desire in serving God, God will never exchange us. God will never reject us because he knows who and what we are. He knows of the pain we've suffered, the slaughtering, the Holocaust, the destruction of the first temple, the second temple, the exiles, the anti-Semitism. God knows of this. This is the meaning. God has distinguished us that we are his eternal treasure. What's a treasure? A treasure, a family heirloom. Somebody says, oh, I like this. I'll buy it from you. And they said, no, I'm not partying. Well, I'll give you $100. $100, I won't tell. I'll give you $500. It's worth maybe, maybe it's worth $75. I won't part with it. Why not? It doesn't make any sense. It's a family heirloom. I see what's contained within it. I see my mother. I see my father. I see my grandparents. I see my roots. I see who I am. This is so special. It's my treasure. And I love it. We are Hashem's treasure. And he loves us in spite of our shortcomings, in spite of our faults. This is what Hashem is saying. And you want the proof that you're my treasure? I have bestowed upon you the gift of my mitzvahs so you can receive my great blessings, blessings that will open up the portal to the world to come to all eternity and blessings to make your life meaningful and happy in this world. Is it any wonder that the portion of Kisava almost always occurs when we begin just prior to the beginning of Slichas. This Saturday night we'll begin Slichas at midnight in the sanctuary. And the Slichas service, we think we get up, an extra, we have to have an extra 20, 25 minutes, more davening, we get up earlier, less sleep. What a privilege 
to stand before our Father, our King, who loves us and distinguished us and calls us his treasure. And to say, my Father, my King, I know I've made terrible mistakes. Forgive me. Because I know you want to forgive me. And I know you love me and will accept my request. How fortunate we are to be Hashem's chosen people. Have a wonderful Shabbos. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay Jewish.